Atlanta's traffic is infamous all around the country, but what's often seen as a failure of infrastructure, some argue is actually tied to segregation. An author recently published an article in the New York Times pointing to segregation as the reason for so much of our traffic. We talked to Kevin Cruz today about his article and his book, White Flight, to see if we could find any solutions to Atlanta's traffic problem. The rise of the modern expressway movement, the interstate highways in the 50s, is really obviously a post-war transformation and that hit American cities. At the same time, a lot of them are wrestling with issues of segregation. Cruz says there are two ways constructing highways played into segregation, making the highway so that it destroys poor black neighborhoods or make a highway that separates them from white neighborhoods. Local officials have a say in where these roads get placed, and it shouldn't be a surprise that as they're thinking about where they're going to drop highways and destroy neighborhoods, they invariably single out what they see as the worst neighborhoods uh, in their communities. And these are overwhelmingly poor communities, and in most places, these are overwhelmingly African-American or in some places Latino uh, neighborhoods. The split is most noticeable along I-20. A report from the Georgia Historical Society says that while deciding the route of I-20, the Atlanta Bureau of Planning said it would be the boundary between white and African-American communities. With that logic in mind, uh, is how you get the kind of the contorted and um, and weird ways in which the highways in Atlanta and other cities take place. It don't really make sense if you're thinking about, well, just from a pure traffic facilitation standpoint, we would put them this way. So can it be fixed? Kevin says there have been a lot of innovative ideas about how to fix Atlanta's traffic problem, but there's one resounding answer that comes up time and time again, yet keeps getting shut down. Uh, underground tunnels throughout the city, uh, one guy had jokingly, I think jokingly, wrote in that he wanted a series of zip lines along the skyscrapers. And the thing that comes up time and time again is just expand MARTA. For the, and it's all, it's clearly people inside the city, just please expand MARTA. But the folks in the suburbs don't want that. Kevin says ever since MARTA popped up in the mid-60s, people in Atlanta's suburbs have been trying to stay disconnected from downtown Atlanta. In March of this year, voters in Gwinnett County once again struck down a measure that would have funded a $5 billion MARTA expansion. That vote came as census data shows Gwinnett becoming more and more diverse, with African Americans now making up nearly 30 percent of the population, Hispanics nearly 22 percent. But according to GeorgiaVotes.com, 60% of the people who voted were white, 75% of those over the age of 50. And they flee to these areas um, to leave the city behind. And they see MARTA as those problems from the city creeping back out to get them. Cobb uh, uh, and Gwinnett overwhelmingly reject MARTA when it comes up for votes uh, in the 60s and early 70s and are still resistant, of course, to it today. We have a lot more from the interview with Kevin Krause up on our website, 11live.com. He, it was fascinating. He talked so much about the reluctance to MARTA playing into desegregating schools in the South. You can check it out now on the website.